Day 120. In the East, things continue to develop very fast. Yesterday, I told you that the Russians practically closed the pocket around Hirske and Zolote. While I was editing the yesterday's video, new updates came out that did not make it to my report. And this update suggested that the Ukrainian forces actually managed to escape out of the cauldron. However, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported today that the fights in Zolote are still taking place, which means that the Ukrainian forces are still there. There's a lot of conflicting information. Some sources say that a part of the Ukrainian forces left their positions. Others say that they withdrew a part of their forces, while another portion of these forces held the Russians off in Zolote. It is not clear what happened there exactly, but if the Ukrainian general staff reported today that there are still fights in Zolote, it means that at least some forces are still there. The Russians are expanding very rapidly. Today they took two more settlements to the north of Hirske. They took Loskutivka, Rai-Alexandrivka and even started assaulting Vovcharivka. Given that the Russian forces are also controlling Vrubivka, the pocket around Hirske and Zolote has fully formed. Theoretically, the Ukrainians in the cauldron may get together and push through the area to the north of Zolote as the Russians have just entered the region and are not well prepared to defend it. However, in practice, it is very hard to move to a different location when you are constantly attacked, because you need to provide cover and gradually move, not giving a chance to the constantly pushing enemy to chase and shoot you in the back. And the Ukrainians in Zolote are being attacked from several directions at once. Moreover, the Russians have moved a lot of heavy machinery in the region and have a lot of forces there, so breaking through their defense will be a very difficult task. As you remember from the fights around Popasne, conducting successful counterattacks even on small villages that the enemy has just entered was very difficult. And here to hope to combine a withdrawal with an assault in the region that is tightly controlled by several armored battalions is extremely optimistic. The Ukrainians in Hirske might risk it if the Ukrainians in Lysychansk will be able to assist them. According to the latest estimates, there are from 1,200 to 2,500 troops in the cauldron, depending on whether a part of these forces actually managed to escape, or the information about their escape was incorrect and they are still staying in Hirske. I have just received more updates. The general staff reported that the Russians took the village of Mykolaivka. It was also reported that the enemy is assaulting Hirske, which suggests that a lot of troops are still there. The Russians are also conducting one assault after another in the direction of Vovcharivka, but so far the Ukrainians are still controlling it. In the Lysychansk direction, the Russians conducted a series of attacks on Bilahora and Borivske, but the Ukrainians repelled these attacks and conducted a counterattack to push the enemy further. In Severodonetsk, the Russians assaulted the southeastern part of the industrial zone. The fights here are still taking place. The same concerns Sirotane. The Russians are still trying to establish full control over this village. Overall, the situation in the east is very bad. The main objective of the Ukrainians right now is to make sure that the tertiary defense line stops such a rapid expansion of the Russian forces. As there are more than 10,000 soldiers in the northern part of this region, I think that the Ukrainians will manage to achieve this objective. If you find my daily reports useful, consider supporting me on Patreon or by a purchase in my online store. Find all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.